Alrighty, so Matt's problem is that he's working too hard and I think oh, there's a way we can solve that, okay? Because prisms, we identify what a prism is, it's something that we can slice repeatedly over and over and over again and people are getting stuck on these formulas. But realistically with volume, you don't need to remember any more formulas or moving, there's a few others here, but these are the main three that I'm noticing we're getting stuck on. So it's really important we address the three area formulas we're getting stuck with before we start thinking about prisms. I'll then run through question one and show us how we can apply these. So obviously I'm going to draw these shapes here, but a common misconception I'm seeing is if this is our triangle, the area is equal to half base times height or base times height divided by two. That is my height. The side, where is my pen? I don't know where it is. There it is. Nope, that's a lid. Oh good, there's another red one. There it is. Alright, the side here, that's no value to us when we're calculating our volume or our area yet. So one of the misconceptions, one of the things I saw was people were measuring that. And that does come in handy later, but not right now. So we don't need to worry about that right now. So the area of our triangle is equal to our base times our height divided by two. If we think about what a square looks like, that kind of makes sense too. Because, or a rectangle, base times height would be our rectangular shape. How much of that do we have in the red? Half of it, divided by two. So that's where the triangle formula comes from. The trapezoid, that appears to be one that we are really struggling with. Some of us don't even know what a trapezoid looks like. It could look like that. It's essentially a four-sided shape with two parallel lines of different length. A, B, height. What we're doing there is taking the average of our top and our bottom height, or bo top and our bottom length, and multiplying it by our height, just like we would do with a rectangle, length times width. Sweet. Once we find the area of that, we can find the volume. A trapezoid could look like that, it could look like this. As long as the top, the two lengths that are parallel, as long as they are different, then we have a trapezoid and we can use that formula. And obviously with our circle, there is only one thing in a circle. Our radius. Be aware if they give us our, if they give us a diameter, what do we need to do? Divide it by two. And with pi, you can find that by hitting shift and I think it's 10 to the power of. So shift 10 to the power of, down the bottom there, and that will give you your pi. So we use this information here, when we give these nets, we're being asked to measure the length. So I'm hoping that every person measured them and got something like five, 2.5, and two, was it? Yes. So the volume of that shape is equal to the area of the triangle, times by the depth, or the length, or the height. I don't care what you want to call it. I probably wouldn't call it height because we're going to be dealing with height in a second. So the area of my triangle equals half, or base, which is five, times 2.5, divided by two, times my depth, which is two. And I forgot to put my units down, but they're all centimeters. So my volume, therefore, equals that's about 12.25 or 5? 12.5, it is 5. 12.5 centimetres cubed. That's my volume. Very easy once I know the, the area of my cross section. If I needed to find the surface area for that, which I've asked you to do, I would just identify What's that length there? What is it? 
I'm going to guess it's the same as that length there. I then look at the shapes that I have. I'm just going to rub them. These lang I need that 2.5. I'm going to call this A. I'm going to call this B. I'm going to call this one C. I'm going to call this D. Call this E. My surface area equals area A plus area B plus area C plus area D plus area E. What do I know about area A and B? They're the same, so I can just write 2 times A. What do I know about area D and E? So I can just write 2 times yep, D. So I'm going to find area A first. What's area A equal? Half base times height. 5 times 2.5 divided by 2 which equals 6.25 centimetres squared. What about area C? What's that equal? Base times width, which is? 10 centimetres squared. And then my last one, area D equals length times width, which is 2 times 3.5, which equals 7 centimetres squared. So my final answer, I'm just going to do this over here. My final answer, surface area, equals 2 times 6.25 centimetres squared plus 10 centimetres squared plus 2 times, I've done that wrong way around, Two times seven centimeters squared, which equals twelve point five centimeters squared plus ten centimeters squared plus fourteen centimeters squared, thirty six point five centimeters squared. Sweet. Yep. Now. What was easy about this? What would be, because what's easy about question one versus question two? There's less things to do. Nothing. Oh, I would argue there's probably more to do in question one. That's not where the challenge lies. Question one gives you that image, doesn't it? Does question two? No. If we were really stuck, what could we do? Draw your net. Draw your net. Okay, you can draw your net. When is drawing your net helpful? Is that helpful in calculating your volume? Not really. Not really. When did you find it really helpful? Surface. surface area. So that's a really good strategy to get through the surface area. If you can visualise it, life's a lot easier. I'm going to give you a bit of time now, 10 minutes to do question 2 and 3, and then we'll run through those on the board.